What's up, you sick motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Flesh Who and Horror. I'm Mike Kruger, joined with producer Todd Loya. What's up? And tonight we are doing the Candyman franchise show we talked about. So uh, if you haven't already checked out our Candyman 2021 review, go check that out. Uh, also, if you want to see the uncensored version, patreon.com slash flesh wound features starts at just a buck. Go watch our uncensored review. Uh, I definitely have a nice offensive rant towards the end there. So uh, <laughs> if you're into that type of stuff, starts at just a dollar. Um, so, yeah, fucking candy, man. Uh, one of my personal favorite uh, films of the 90s, uh, probably my favorite horror film from the 90s is Candyman. Um, I'm a huge Tony Todd fan as well. Uh, always loved, you know, Tony Todd and anything. And Candyman, just as the years have gone by, it's even held up better for me. It's one of the actual, like, first movies. I wouldn't say first, but one of, one of the movies I definitely remember from my childhood that terrified the living shit out of me uh, i brought this up on a Candyman 2021 review but i'll say it again the whole sequence when helen wakes up in the house with the blood all over in the crib and the fucking dead dog that scene terrified my soul as a child and uh it, 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 i mean it just it, it etched into my head for so long and uh candy man just in general i think is one of the most effective horror films but uh todd did you see Candyman in the theaters? Ninety-two. I'm almost sure I did. I know I didn't see the second. The third didn't really get theatrical release. Um, I might have killed those brain cells at this point, but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, yeah. If not, I saw it immediately when it came out. You know, at ninety-two, I saw it. <laughs> and as far as uh, you go, like you're you're big, pretty big fan. Like where you stand on it? Uh, Tony Todd, one hundred percent. Candyman. I like. I kind of wish I liked it more, but I do really enjoy it. It's one I do go back to, but it's not like anywhere in my top ten. Oh, okay. I yeah. Like as far as like top ten slashers, I guess. Uh, yeah. Or just in general, because like for me, in general, it's... just I. I mean, just like in, in horror in general, I didn't mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Yeah, because like I mean, I I mean Candyman. I mean in the, the first film, maybe you. Know, I mean, it's technically a supernatural slasher, but. Uh, you know, as the time goes on, it definitely goes into, you know, becomes a true slasher. And I don't know, for me, it's, it, it's high up there. Like I take candy, I'll take candy man over Chucky. Um, I take candy man over actually quite a bit of stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it off the top of my head, uh, you know, it, it's definitely, he's definitely not, you know, he's not knocking out any of the, any of the big four, but I'd say he's maybe five for me. Um, the one thing is, I know if I don't put the argument out there, the supernatural slasher, because mm -hmm. it is also that it is in her own head and she really is doing the killing. So that way it wouldn't be a supernatural slasher. Yeah. So it just depends on your. It's one of those things where, but, because when you came into it, mm -hmm. there was already three films. So by the yeah. time that second film happens, the narrative changes from it all being in her head. Yeah, too. It was the actual candy band. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's weird. It's one of those things. Like if it was just the first one, the pers the perspective changes. I know Dan brought it up yesterday, but once that second one happens and there's already a trilogy when you come into it, mm -hmm. it never even crosses your mind. Did that cross your mind when you first saw it? Were, that like it was just uh, that it was just Helen the whole time. Yeah. Um. Yes and no. I I, I like my my the whole the whole thing that kind of prevents me from saying it, it is like that is the end scene i mean right. where she where she you know shows up and kills her husband i mean if candy man wasn't real then why the how the why the fuck would it all of a sudden work with helen you know what i'm saying yeah like that that ending kind of proves that there is a fucking candy man um at least to me and like you said you know going into it uh, just the franchise and jet like it was already a franchise. Yeah. So like I saw it, you know, as a slasher. But I, I mean, I he's he's fucking basically like Freddy Krueger. Yeah. I mean, the, especially even he, more so with the fucking new movie that we got, uh, the twenty twenty one one. I mean, it, it, I mean, it fully goes into that realm where he's basically exactly like Freddy. And if that, and even if that wasn't the intentions, that's where it, it became. It's yeah. kind of 
kind of like um, other horror franchises. They attend one thing, Friday the 13th, and it becomes something completely different by the time you hit the second and third. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it, yeah, I it mean, happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean that first. I mean the first Friday Thirteenth. I, I don't think was ever intended to be a fucking franchise, but I mean, sure as shit, you know. It, I mean, it didn't even start with the same fucking slasher icon. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So just yeah, Candyman. Pretty fucking big fan. Um, just in general, I, I think Tony to I, like I. People always say that, you know, how oh, Candyman versus the Leprechaun would have been, you know, so stupid. And granted, I'm with you on there, but I kind of always wish we would have got a Candyman versus film with somebody. You know what I mean? Like maybe Chucky. You think that would work? I don't know. Fucking I, I just I've always wanted to see Candyman fucking kicks actually kick some ass like watching Freddy versus Jason. Like I, I could totally see Candyman in there hooking some motherfucker and. It, it, I don't know why, but my brain says, and this is probably just because of licensing and stuff. Yeah, Candyman versus Wishmaster would have worked, <laughs> dude. That would have been cool, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, that would have been cool. Oh, I love, I love the Wishmaster series, but that's for another fucking time. Uh, Tony Todd's in Wishmaster, though, yes, isn't he? he is. The first one, yeah, I, yeah. There's a bunch of horror icons in the first one. Yeah, and just to- on Tony Todd in general, because, I mean, it would be a disservice to not fucking have his own little portion of this show. I mean, I love that motherfucker. Uh, have you watched Holliston? Oh, yeah. I love that oh, show. Dude, with him and Holliston is so fucking funny. Like, I, I love him. Uh, just anytime you get a special feature with a Tony Todd interview on a Blu-ray or something, I always... I always find it a treat revisiting these Candyman movies. I mean, man, the interviews on the Shout Factory releases for the first two films are so fucking awesome. I mean, he and you could just tell how much he really cares about this role. I mean, even even he says uh, he doesn't care to really talk much about Candyman three. But, uh, you know, the first two films, like he had a lot of input on what he wanted to do with the character, too, that directors actually listen to him and i think that's just so cool because that i i don't think Candyman would have been what it is today if it what it, like it's one of those things where like i don't think nightmare on elm street wouldn't have actually worked with anybody else but robert england at that time i don't think it would have become the pop culture icon that freddy krueger has become without robert england there and i fully believe that with Candyman as well and speaking on that just in general like i think Candyman is one of the most recognizable uh horror icons too i mean it's one that you really hear about a lot more than most other things i mean i i think he's up there with as far as popularity and people knowing who Candyman is i think he's uh, he's he may not be on the level of michael freddie jason leatherface but he's definitely fucking close yeah, and the one thing about him is he has the whole urban legend thing going with him. Mm-hmm. So even people, kids who haven't seen the film, know the whole Candyman thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you ever do it when you were so ninety two? How old were you? Jesus, gonna make me do math. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was Can- in my middle teens. Hold on. Okay, so like I was probably like 15, 16, Yeah. Yeah, because I I mean, I saw Candyman a lot younger than that. I mean, I was, you know, really fucking young, probably six when I saw it or something. But like, I I remember doing the Candyman thing in the mirror and literally like being scared to fucking death. And like, I didn't really necessarily want to do it. But my friend who was a little more ambitious than I was at that time, fucking after watching the movies, like, yeah, we need to go fucking do that right now. And I was like, I don't know about invoking some shit. I'm not, I'm not as I'm not as super natural or not as superstitious now, considering the marketing uh, for the new Candyman movie. You had to say it five times into your phone to get the new trailer. Uh, not that scared of it anymore, but still. <laughs> but um, yeah, so fucking, I think we've had a long enough intro for ten fucking minutes. So uh, if you haven't seen what our franchise shows are we uh just break things down into different topics so we could just talk about the franchise as a whole um tonight we'll be talking about our ranking favorite kill favorite visual throughout the franchise our favorite line slash quote and our favorite character um so 
if you enjoy these shows that we're doing, like these franchise shows, let us know. Let us know if there's anything uh, you would like us to cover. And also stay tuned or stay tuned for more of them. And go back and check out our other ones. I know we've done Friday the 13th. We've done Nightmare on Elm Street, which obviously one of my favorites. Another uh, we, t- Tony Todd one, Final Destination. Y- yes, we've done Final Destination. We have done... Uh, what the fuck else have we done, Todd? I know we're missing some... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm fucking. I, I can't think off the top of my head. Too many chair shots. But uh, yeah, so definitely check out our other franchise shows. There are always these are some of my favorite shows that we fucking do. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into everything. So let's start with just ranking them. Um, so you know, only four films, so not that not that long of of a list. But uh, I don't know. You want to go first, Todd? Um, no, go for it. All right. So, um, me personally, obviously the first Candyman is my favorite. I don't think, uh, anybody's going to dispute that. I think that's kind of where it's going to lie on most people's list. Um, but yeah, Candyman, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, second on my list, my uh, second favorite film would be Candyman 2 Farewell to Flesh. Um, rewatching it. I actually think it's a really good sequel, um, more so than I, I think I remember. Uh, it's all, it's a way more silly, and it doesn't have the same tone as the first film. It's much more, I don't know, campy, slasher, you know, feel, and not, you know, a serious gothic, you know, horror film like the first film. But I don't know. I still loved everything about uh, Candyman 2, like it, it's definitely not on the same level as the first one, but I think it's a solid sequel, especially for the uh backstory scenes that we get with Tony Todd actually becoming the Candyman and seeing that all play out on, on screen. I actually really thought that's kind of what set that as a next level sequel to me. Uh, and then I would probably go Candyman 2021 after uh Candyman 2. Mainly, uh, the main reason why it's third and not last is because I, I, I think Candyman 3 kind of cheapens the franchise a little bit, uh, even more so than the Candyman 2 did because of the, just the tone and the, I, I don't know, the characters aren't really that well done in Candyman 3. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the cop characters in particular in that movie. I just think it's so fucking silly. Um so Candyman 3, obviously, at, at, at the last one on my list. Um, so from top, Candyman, Candyman 2, uh, Candyman 2021, and then Candyman 3, Day of the Dead. Uh, that's my from best to worst ranking. What about you, Todd? Well, before I say mine, and there's a reason I wanted you to go first. Um, I Real quick, because Dan and Pugs told us their, their ranking of the orders. Mm-hmm. Dan was easy, one, two, three, four. So yeah. he likes him in order. Pugs was exactly one. like I was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there so you go. One, one, two, four, and three. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, now, now here's mine that everyone's gonna hate. I am one, three, four, two. Oh wow! Really? So, and I know three is a bad movie. Mm, yeah, but you, right but you like bad movies. I do. And the fact that we have, uh, um, 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 I can't think of his uh, Nightmare name. on Elm Street, Rod, Rod, from, Rod. dude, that's the one. Uh, okay, so like, that's the one and, thing for that movie that like it saved me from not hitting it because, like, you know, it, it's not a great, it's not great by any means, but even just re watching everything, I was like, that's not as bad as I think everybody makes it out to be. And having Nightmare on Elm Street homeboy in it definitely raises it up. And it's basically the same shit all over again. He's getting accused. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, before, before we go any further, we will get into some spoilers, um, oh. especially when we get to the later ones. So that I should have warned you at the top, but there we go. Yeah, spoiler um, warning. If, uh, watch these movies first if you don't want anything spoiled. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rod. Be, and it's basically the same exact thing happening to him. He gets accused of something to yeah. do. <laughs> um. I like that it, it – that, see, here's the thing, and I know I always drive Dan insane with this. I love Hellraiser 3, probably my favorite Hellraiser. I just – I had 
Supreme co-signed that, so Dan couldn't really say too much shit. But. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I like Hellraiser 3. I mean, it's campy as fuck and not, like, on the same tone as it's the first totally two different. films at all. But I like uh, it, it's good. No, I, I'm with you. Like, it's not bad by any means. And I, had, I think everybody likes Hellraiser 3, though. Really? He hates it? I, I don't know if he hates it or he just gets mad. I, I, okay. love, I love that one. Um, which was my first. No, I saw Hellraiser two in the theater. I just didn't see the first. Oh, no. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I mean, I get uh, Donna Dierko. This is such like a late nineties movie. Yeah. And it has that feel to it for sure. It, it does. Whereas the original Candyman is more timeless. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really feel like an, a nineties picture, which is a good thing. It makes it evergreen. Yeah. Um, same with the the second one has that it's kind of in the middle. Um, I don't know. There's I like bits of two and three, but I love the campiness of of three. Mm-hmm. So, and then but, you and you said you like twenty twenty one over two. Now, yeah. like, like, is there a specific problem you have with two? Or I just even this time I I've never been able to get into it. Mm, okay. I, I I can never really put. I don't know if it's the whole setting. Or what? Like I do like the, the Louisiana st- yeah. setting. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, the one because thing on, on my rewatch that it kind of reminded me of, and maybe that's why it did so well for me now, is one of my favorite slasher franchises, Hatchet, takes mm-hmm. place in Louisiana, and like that kind of that's kind of where my mind went when I was watching it. So maybe that's why I hold it to so such high regard now. But right. Well, the thing with with two is it kind of it changes the formula too. Cause we're, we leave the big city. Cause the, uh, the first one we're in like, you know, the project yeah. on in, uh, you know, big city. And I think the other reason I like three a lot is we're back to big city, but this time it's LA. LA. Uh, and I, Oh like yeah. That. No wonder you like fucking three. It's in LA. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I toyed with the idea of making it one, but there's no way I could say this is a better movie than the first. Yeah. I just have a lot of fun with the third one. No, I, like it, I like I said on this rewatch, I don't think Candyman three is as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Um, it definitely doesn't have like I, I was looking at some of the reviews on it. Uh, like I think Bloody Disgusting posted like some revisit review of Candyman three, and I was just like, oh, let me check this out since I'm going to be watching it in a few hours. And they were like talking about how bad the gore is and all that. And I'm like. It's not gonna have bad gore. I mean, it ain't great, but it definitely isn't bad. And I, I, I don't know. I think people talk talk too much shit about it. To be honest with you, if, there, and if there's one thing I'll say, I think Candyman's one of the most consistent throughout all, like the four films. I don't think they're that far. Like uh, the first one's at a whole nother level, but I don't think right. any of the sequels are like so do- such dog shit you can't watch them. Right. And like to be honest, I'm kind of like that with some Halloween films. I mean, uh, like some of my future franchise show, by the way, which will be happening in October. But uh, like some of the Halloween films, like I find very, very hard to get through. And none of the Candyman films for me, I thought were you know terrible, or I was ever clock watching or anything like that. So uh, yeah, Candyman three definitely isn't that bad. Is there a Blu-ray release for it in the states? There is not. I mean, you can watch it on Hulu. Yeah, uh, Lionsgate holds it, so I'm hoping we see a Vestron release. Which that would be rad because, like, I really do want it now just to complete the collection. Yeah. And you know, I'll be buying twenty or the 2021 film uh, as well. But even uh, if even if they shit on it in the extras, that's <laughs> fine. I just want to hear thoughts on it. Yeah, no, like I would love to hear what the production was like because, like, I now. But maybe I'm wrong about this. But was this was the director of Candyman three a porn director? I'm gonna double because check. I was because when I was when I put in my rating on IMDb, I was looking at some of the reviews for it, and, and like I think three or four people said that, and I was like, was well, he a he, porn director? Because direct, like he directed some Buffy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying. It didn't say anything on IMDb. But yeah. maybe there's something, maybe it's not credited on there. I'm not sure. But 
I just like I saw that argument and I was like, well, that's gonna make me like it even more. <laughs> well, I saw that argument and I was like, wait a minute, fucking wasn't part like that's a stupid argument. Part five for Friday the Thirteenth was directed by a porn oh, director, and that absolutely. movie's fucking awesome. So, um, uh, also, uh, see no evil with Kane directed by a porn, oh, porn director. Really? Yeah, I didn't Greg, know that. Yeah, Gregory Dark. Oh, I and you know, I, I do love me some see no evil. I need to revisit. The fucking second one, though. Well, you I, know what? Maybe we can do that because I know Pugs would be thrilled to do it. Oh, dude! Though there's two yeah. movies. Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I'm in for that. Um, fuck, we can we can add a Kane fucking spotlight on there. That's another show for another time. So <laughs> now that we got the right, so Todd, you are you said one, three, uh, four, and two, right? Yes. Okay. So rankings out of the way. Um, now we'll go the favorite kill now. Before I say mine, I'll just say rewatching these, there is they're not that fantastic, the kills throughout this franchise. Like it's not on the level of, you know, Friday the thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, even Texas Chainsaw, to be honest with you. Uh, like as far as the kills go. Now, granted, that doesn't make the uh, doesn't make me not like the franchise as much, but just just a fu- like a little note that I took while watching all this is like, yeah, none of these kills are like ridiculously over the top or something necessarily completely memorable. Um, that being said, my personal favorite kill throughout the franchise um, was the doctor in the first film getting his back split open, bent over the desk by uh, Candyman, and just like the like Candyman, like Tony Todd let out like this kind of grunt, and then all this blood sprayed up from Homeboy's back, and it was just like it was like fucking perfect, like the way the kill went, and uh, yeah, I just, and it was also like a kind of like holy shit moment, and the whole scene where Helen is the one that actually summons him to take this dude out too, I think is pretty badass. Um, so yeah, that's probably my favorite kill throughout the franchise. Um, that being said, I would say consistently, I think the new one may have the best kills. Uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, I it's one of those like the I this one I've struggled with the whole time because as you said, the original ones they aren't like like I like the Candyman is it three? Yeah, it's probably three. I probably have too much three on here. But when 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 Candyman's killed and she's cutting the picture and the bees are coming out, I always thought that mm-hmm. was really cool. Um, but I Oh that's I, I think that I think that's two. Okay, yeah, you know what you might, yeah, that is. Or is it in both? Jesus. Oh, it, it could be. <laughs> I, I remember specifically a effect in two where may, maybe she just scratched him or something, but like she did something to his face and then the bees were like coming out of an open wound. Yeah, I, I think it does. I think that and the second one, the third one is the picture. Yeah, yeah, cut, yeah. When she's cutting the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it comes back to the, the new one. I, the kills are what really st- stood out. If you listen to our review, you'll yeah, like I, they, they they were really stylistic yeah. and like the way they showed like and this may be a little maybe a little too much, but I don't know. They, it kind of reminded me of the way kills are in Shallows, if that makes sense. Nope i was I was actually gonna go there. They're they're super stylistic. Um, minus the the the, the amount of blood flow, but there's that yeah. super stylistic uh, kind of kill. Um, that said, I really liked the, and you don't really see a lot, but I like the bathroom kill. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's probably my favorite yeah. kill in that movie. It's that, well, that and like, and it's funny know. cause that was not even needed at all for the plot. It's oh just, no. It was just, <laughs> Hey, let's kill some more fucking, let's kill some white girls. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Let's show the, let's show the bully black girl and kill these white girls real quick. Um, so you know what? I'm going to go with that one. That, I, that I one, did really like it. Yeah, I mean, it was like, I think that's the one thing that prevented me from hating the new candy man. And like, I thought, I, I mean, it's, I, de- I definitely think it's going to have people split. I already see, like, it's so weird to me that like so many people think it's fantastic though. I wasn't expecting like I thought people would be like, oh yeah, it's good and it's maybe one of the better sequels. But there's people really stroking this movie off. So 
All power to you, Nia DaCosta. I hope you fucking do something better next time, though. Just saying. Um, and I didn't even, like, dislike the movie, but I think it could have been way better. Uh, use Tony Todd, goddammit. All right, before I get on another fucking rant, uh, next little thing we'll talk about is favorite visual, uh, mainly because I think this fucking movie is or this franchise chalk filled with them. Um, I mean, there's definitely some disturbing, like, like I already talked about at the top of the hour, uh, some really disturbing moments that stuck with me as a child, you know, throughout the series. And while I do, like I said, probably as far as, you know, just what stuck out to me the most in the Candyman franchise as a kid, that crib scene fucked me up, terrified the shit out of me. But my personal favorite visual is, uh, Candyman, when he, him and how he like, he kind of hypnotizes Helen and then, uh, he's about to kiss her and he reveals his torso and all the bees are just crawling all over him. And then he opens his mouth and the bees are crawling out. That's my favorite visual throughout the movie. Uh, just a shot of Tony with all the fucking bees inside this goddamn mouth. Uh, super iconic. And fun fact, the way they did that, uh, watching the shout or the screen factory Blu-ray, I guess they put like a mouth plate in inside his mouth. So like, the bees couldn't, you know, crawl to the back of his throat. But one of the fucking bees got behind it and ended up like crawling in his throat Why he was fucking filming and he didn't break character at all. <laughs> That's a fucking uh, actor, brother. <laughs> but uh, favorite visual, what about you, Todd? That's actually what I had down, but I'll give a second one because I put one down just in case we had the same. Yeah. Shocker, it's from part three. <laughs> A bigger shocker, it is the, the naked girl with her throat slit covered in blood. Mm -hmm. I love that visual, and it's not just because it's tits and blood, but that doesn't hurt. But the fur, the, like the, the the one that the sleazy art yeah. guy, yeah, that yeah, that's and that that was a pretty good scene to be honest yeah. with you. That's where like because I I was expecting Candyman three to suck ass, <laughs> like really. That's why good you went in with that expectation. Yeah, it, it surprised me. Like, granted, I don't think it's fantastic, but definitely. Uh, there is so much fucking worse in other franchises. Let me fucking tell you. We have Leatherface for fuck's sake. All right. And and by Leatherface, he means Leatherface, not Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Three. No, I'm talking 2017 <laughs> yeah. piece of garbage. I'll I'll never watch. Uh, Wait I'll till never the franchise. Say, show. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna be forced to. God damn it. I'm gonna have to watch a couple I don't like, and I'm yeah. gonna be the I'm gonna be the one who's the asshole on that. One. <laughs> Well, um it'll happen yeah <laughs> um, it feels like a summer show maybe we'll do that with next summer summer barbecue kind what of tcm yeah i'm i'm down when the fuck does the new uh, one come out we'll have to figure that maybe we'll time it with that yeah i, I the, it, by the way did you just a little off topic but did you see the little interview that fide alvarez did about this no, because uh, he's producing it. He did an interview and he's like, I don't know who the fuck saw this test screening, but this movie's fucking oh. awesome. Yeah. And like, I'm like, Fide, you also fucking said that Don't Breathe 2 is better than the first one. Shut the fuck up. But I mean, you think you think so. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> but I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I He's got to sell his fucking movies. I get yeah. it. Um, so moving on. Uh, favorite quote or line. Um, for me, and this shouldn't actually be a surprise to you, Todd, since you've probably heard it throughout my wrestling career. Um, but for anybody that don't know, doesn't know, I'm a retired pro wrestler, and at the beginning of my entrance theme, Tony Todd would say some other some words, and it was always, and that's how you know I was coming out to fuck shit up, and that was there was a reason. It's one of my favorite quotes of any fucking horror film ever. Uh, and from the first one, they say I've shed innocent blood. What's blood for if not for shedding? With my hook in my hand, I'll split you from your groin to your gullet. Um, I didn't have the groin to your gullet fucking part, but I had the, you know, they say I've shed innocent blood. What's blood for if not for shedding? And that's how you know somebody was going to get fucked up by Michael Kruger. And for good reason, that fucking quote's fantastic. Uh, and just immediately when I was watching Candyman uh, back, those words uttered at the beginning of the movie. And I kind of forgot where they were in the movie. Uh, and it 
sends chills up my spine still to this fucking day. So, and you yeah. know, it's it's partially revisited in the third one when the detective says, "I'm gonna yeah. you for my the growing to the gullet." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and he's and then he's I think uh yeah yeah Candyman when he comes back he he says uh. They've said they said I shed innocent blood, but the blood I shed tonight is not innocent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, what about you, Todd? Favorite? Well, I mean, it's hard to beat that one, yeah. but I'm gonna go with one that I kind of tipped my hat yesterday. It's it's in the bathroom kills mm -hmm. when the girls say "Don't be a pussy," and the one girl says, "Why? It's warm and it's wonderful." <laughs> yeah, um that's, I mean, that, that that's probably the best uh, fucking line in that movie. I couldn't stop laughing. The people next to me were just like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it triggered Dan. You know why. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, that, that's a good one. And, like, there was, I'm trying to think, there was, like, a, there was another quote in there uh, from the new one that was really good. And I just, I can't fucking remember. It was said by the uh, Walking Dead dude. Fucking. Oh, yeah. Um, God damn it! I can't fucking remember something uh, about Candyman's. Uh, Candyman's not the, not the bees, the whole damn hive, or some shit like that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool, and I, I honestly, it kind of made sense because, like, later on in the movie, when Yaya, you know, is turning into Candyman, his uh, skin starts to turn into uh, literally like honeycomb yeah. that the bees were going inside. So, pretty fucking cool there. That's another reason why i don't hate that movie either that fucking effect was good shit no. um always gonna get me with an effect guy so this is probably gonna be an easy one but uh our last topic for candy man franchise show his favorite character now i'm just gonna say going forward my favorite character is fucking candy man that's what I have. for sure <laughs> but I think that's a little cheap. I can't fucking go with just a slasher. So if I'm not going with Candyman, Tony Todd, or, and to be specific, since we got more fucking Candyman now, uh, Tony Todd Candyman's my favorite. But uh, favorite character, Helen, of course. I mean, I just think her perform the performance in that movie that she gave. Um, what's her name again? I, I the actress oh, uh, Virginia Madison. Yeah, Virginia Madison. The performance she gave in that fucking film is phenomenal one of the best acting performances i've seen in a horror film ever and i felt for her character throughout that movie uh even on this rewatch like you know all the shit she's dealing with in her personal life and honestly that kind of that that movie has a little bit of a feminine like my girl was pointing it out to me she thinks it has a little bit of a feminist uh take on it especially with how helen is as a character and she's trying to prove all the men wrong and you know that she and, and like there's a there's a line that she gives to the uh to her uh i forgot what her friend was called that went into the uh cabrini green with her but she says something like about her husband and uh someone else and like would they would they go in here no they chicken shit out and, and it was just pro like she kind of stands for woman empowerment i definitely see like that's probably like a big reason why my girl loves candy man um and i in my opinion i think helen's probably one of the best characters especially with the transformation uh she goes through throughout the film and then at the end ultimately sacrificing herself to save anthony and uh maybe to some people maybe she shouldn't because then we wouldn't have got the fucking new one but um <laughs> what about you todd favorite character is it from three uh, you know what? Honestly, it's Helen. But if I'm picking right behind it, it's Rod from Nightmare on Elm Street, David oh, Lapaz. Yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, Mike. It would. It, it has to be Helen. I mean, yeah. I mean, if we're not picking Candyman, it has to be Helen. <laughs> Speaking of Helen, were you kind of? I've seen people talking about this. Were you kind of disappointed that she didn't show up in the new one? <sighs> because I almost felt like she should have, maybe in a haunting scene with. Uh, anthony's mom it's hard because she's well she, she still looks good for her age but you can tell the aging difference i mean Although, they did cgi I told yeah, me yeah i was gonna say the eight they de-aged him <sighs> i don't know well, you know one thing we never talked about yesterday and i, I kind of like that we've had a little time to let the movie sit mm -hmm. um we didn't bring up the how they handled the flashbacks what were your oh, thoughts on that with the uh stick figures I thought it was it would have been cool for 
all right. So like when I saw it for the, cause they were, that was basically a big thing in the marketing that right. they were doing. They were showing those sequences, especially the last couple of days. They literally showed the whole fucking Helen fucking portion. Oh, um, yeah, I, I didn't, I missed that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I thought it was cool for one scene. It should have been Tony Todd scene and not anybody else. Um, I didn't like how they kept going back to, they, cause they went back to, I think like, Three times. Three times. I yeah. wonder if it's just they didn't want to pay Sony or any of the other people. The, the rights money? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I would have been fine with that. I would have been fine revisiting it in, through pictures. You know what I mean? Like, just, you know, photograph. I mean, we do a little bit with some other story. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it could have been. I, I think that time could have been spent elsewhere. I'm. I wonder, is there another cut of this movie out there? Because I, I feel like it has to be, especially with the way the how rushed the fucking you know the final act is. I I, I feel like there has to be maybe a two hour cut of this yeah, film. Or, it, it feels like there should be at least an extra twenty. Yeah, there's definitely a portion of this thing missing, and I I just I I want I wonder if it would make a big difference to me or not, because, you know, part of my issue is, you know, with the third act, just at, you know, that one, the main, you know, the laundry mat dude, J uh, walking dead guy, fucking, you know, literally going like that on a turn. And you don't even like, it's not even hinted at that. This guy is going to turn into the, you know, the antagonist of the film at uh -huh. all. Although it's funny because he does that literally everything he's in. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're just supposed to expect it because that's what he does. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I, I I I wonder. My biggest issue, I think, with the new Candyman is just Tony Todd needed to be that character, and I did not need the other. I expected him about as much as he was in it, honestly. I didn't think we were going to get like a I lot. I thought we were going to get at least a couple of minutes, not fucking 15 seconds, man. I, you know? I was I was excited when like when he was doing the paintings, you could see a couple of the paintings were Tony Todd. Yeah. Not not the, you know, the other one. I I, I wasn't sure like I other than the first, maybe the second trailer which didn't give a lot away. So I I had heard Tony Todd, but I didn't know how much and I, I, yeah, it's kind of what I, there was actually, I was more surprised that it was more Virginia Madison stuff. Like yeah. you said, they kind of spoiled that in the late days leading up, but I was like, well, that's cool. I mean, they both got a payday and I know we talked about it yesterday, this, you know, them not using Tony Todd as Candyman. It's like 70 getting him insured dude, again. Hard. I'm CGI. I'm, I see, <laughs> dude, I'm fine with it. They already fucking did it. That wasn't him now. Like, right. you know, it, it, I mean, but that's I, one shot. That's a little different. Yeah. I just, but you could, there, there's a way that, to movie magic. Motherfucker. Just don't oh, show no. it. Just don't show his face until the end. Just, I think my issue was that that wasn't my issue is, this other Candyman is not the Candyman I came to fucking see. Okay? This other, like, the Yaya part's fine with me. I like that portion. I like the fact that Anthony turned into Candyman at the end of the film. But this other, the the, the whole pr police brutality victim Candyman, the fact that he was the one doing all the killing, the fact that that was the entity they were focusing on and not Tony Todd. When Tony Todd has such a, Tony Todd's character... Um, what the hell is it? He's I forgot his. Oh, uh, Daniel. Daniel. Uh, shoot, hold on. I have something with a P. I think. Yeah, no, Robitaille. Daniel. Robitaille. Yeah, Daniel Robitaille. Like my problem is this: Daniel Robitaille had a connection to Anthony mm -hmm. to, from birth, or you know, not birth, but from infancy. So that should have been the Candyman that was haunting him, not the one he was fucking reading about and all this shit. And my other problem too is just. I, I I feel like the movie would have like I I I I wanted more fan service if that makes sense. I feel like that's a big issue with a lot of film nowadays is like people kind of have that or especially if you're revisiting a franchise or something keep people have that conflicting issue of you know do I need to make something new and ambitious or do I need to you know do fan service? And I say you need a little bit of both. Now I mean, especially 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the one thing I'll say about Halloween 20, 2018 is it gave me so much fan service that I was, I, I, it made me love it, and it became one of my favorite. And over the, the fucking what three years it's been out, it's been one of my most revisited Halloween films because of how much fan service I got in that movie. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've been afraid to revisit that because I'm hoping my love is not just the fan service, which yeah. I will be revisiting before the new one. But I'm just like, I, I hope it, it doesn't change for me. I really do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were saying the hive stuff was unneeded. Mm-hmm. Like I, they, it's like they overthought it. Like they overbooked it. They, we didn't need the, the Cabrini green candy man. Cause we already established Tony Todd was, but then the you go to the, man. yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's frustrating. It feels like, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm probably completely off base with this and this may not be the intention at all, but I feel like the whole point of do, ha, making that decision is to put the social commentary right in your face. And the thing that makes the first candy man so great is there's strong social commentary in that film, but it's not smacking you in the mouth. And I mean, I, I think, uh, and it's funny because people talk so much shit about Candyman three because the social, because co- there is social commentary there too with the cops and the police corruption and shit, and them being racist motherfuckers. And people's issue with Candyman three that I fucking have seen reviews of is that they hate the fact that the co- the social commentary is smacking you in the mouth. So I don't see how people like or like the new one when it's smacking you in the mouth throughout the whole film from start to fucking finish. And with Candyman three, they don't like that Porsche. Granted, I I, I mean Candyman three is not as well done as this, but it's just. I don't know. I find I, 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 my biggest issue, the social commentary thing and Tony Todd is candy, man. And that you're not going to fucking try to sway me otherwise. And going in, I, I was told motherfucking Tony Todd is returning and then he returns for 15 seconds. I mean, that's, there's nothing that's going to give me a limper dick than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's just, it, it it had so much potential, and I think if there was a little tweak here, a little knob turned here, it would have been a goddamn fantastic sequel. But yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, you can't we can't change what's done now. And like I said, I don't hate it; I do like it, especially because of the kills, like we already talked about. But I don't see. I don't know. I don't see this movie standing the test of time like other sequels are gonna uh, with other franchises. So I know I called it junk food yesterday. It's just it's just mindless, you know. Yeah, and it, it feels like that. To be honest with you, that like you kind of put it the best uh, when you said that because like when you think about the kills and everything, like it, you know, it's just nice eye candy. I mean, they're not ridiculously fantastic kills, but I mean, they're meant to be eye candy. And to have, you know, a artistic take. I, I mean, the whole movie, too, is super, super artsy, I think, a little bit as well. Like, we how... should have loved it. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it just, I don't know. I hope, uh, I only, hope, only, I hope, only, need, okay. No, I was just saying, only, he would have only loved it if it had that A24 logo. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um. But you know, I hope Nia, I wish Nia De Costa the best. I hope she brings some other cool stuff to the horror genre. But I just hope, and I kind of hope this with Jordan Peele now because I do really like Jordan Peele. I I, I really enjoy Get a Out Jordan, and Us, a Jordan Peele movie with the message. You would have thought, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um. Well, yeah, and he. I mean, he helped write the fucking screenplay for fuck's sake, um, and produced it. But my whole thing is. I'm done. I get you guys want to do the social commentary thing. I, I'm fucking all for that. But don't make that be in every single fucking thing you do. Have some fun. All right. Like, not everything needs a deeper message to it. I want to see you guys just have some fun with filmmaking and not worry about the message that you're fucking bringing to the table. I want to see you guys make some fucking fun horror movies. So please, like, I, I'm your defenders, but. It's getting a little much now. We need to we we need to stray away from this shit a little bit, guys. 
Um, or but, use some sub 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 subtile. Be more subtile. I mean, it's hard that no, that they have to hit you over the head with it because people are dumb, dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it just I don't know. I, I just I hope that we're I hope we get to a point where they're able to show how good of a filmmaker, how good filmmakers and creators they are without having the crutch of, oh, well, this is going to be a social message that's going to get a bunch of people's attention that feel the same way as me. I feel the same way as you, but not when you're shoving it down my throat. So let's, let, like I said, just have some fucking fun. Um, and uh, the one thing I'll say about the camp, going back, bringing this all back around the candy man. Uh, the one thing I'll say about Candyman is its sequels have a lot more fucking fun than the last one did. So, um, yeah, Candyman three. If you don't like it, go fuck yourself. Todd <laughs> Todd Lawyer said so. <laughs> Especially uh, that guy in the hat. Yeah, fucking <laughs> fucking asshole. Uh, well, I mean, at least he said it, it, it was better than one of them. But yeah, okay. We, there we go, Dan. You got it's better than the new one, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, other than that, um, you got anything else on Candyman, Todd? No, I. If they do another one that could explain this hive better, it. I don't know how much it's going to redeem it, but it's it's just one of those things. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Kind of would rather just give. Me I'd rather. Ju I'd rather just see ne the them do something else to be honest yeah. with you or dude here's my whole thing make another fucking slasher in place of him like do something else like you know that has the same the same feel with the same message you know I, the, the one thing i argue the most with is nobody's trying to do goddamn slasher franchises anymore and it pisses me the fuck off thank god for fucking terrifier because legit everybody else is slacking like a motherfucker it's weird because with with those kind of pictures, it's hard in like today's climate because those are, let's slashers are tits and gore, yep. good kill, and it's like it's it's hard to pull off like a franchise like that unless they're going back to a name franchise. Yeah, so it, it's it's annoying, but yeah, I think it's gonna have to be like straight to video stuff. I don't see a big theatrical franchise. Yeah, I Unless mean, Unless it's one that we've seen before. Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, studios don't take chances on stuff like that, you know, as much anymore. But, I mean, to be honest with you, everybody making these shitty remakes aren't, aren't fucking helping either, so... Or you know, remakes, reboots, it's... It, it yeah. doesn't... It, do, it doesn't help the case for people to want to, you know, start slasher fucking franchises. But, you know, thank God for the independent market, you know, like I said, Terrifier. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm glad shit like that's still happening. You know, we were supposed to get a Hatchet Five too, and you know, never. It's honestly up. the biggest thing with the studios is they don't make. And I was hoping the pandemic would kind of break this a little bit, and they, I think it kind of has. But studios only do micro budget and like. Three hundred million dollar, three hundred. Yeah, or, you know. yeah. There's not like somebody dropping just you know a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, I'm with you on that. And that's like revisiting some of these older slashers. Oh, you, except okay. for Blumhouse, they are dropping around the twenty million dollar mark to make it make mm -hmm. movies. Even if they aren't all great, they yeah. are like one of the few that are doing like that mid budget picture. Yeah, which. Again, why the fuck is Blumhouse? Well, I guess they do have that stupid puka thing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> why, why? The one thing Dan likes. <laughs> yeah, right. God damn it. I um, he watches it and hates it like the rest of us. <laughs> what, puka? <laughs> yes. Oh, it, it, it's, it's dog shit. I, I mean, I, I got through like maybe. I, I can't say for sure on the second one because I got through maybe. I like the second one actually better. Yeah, that first so. one's ass, but. <laughs> Enough about fucking Puka and goddamn Bloomhouse. Uh, that that conclude will conclude. I think our uh, Candyman franchise show. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed talking about Tony Todd and all of his uh, beautiful glory. And you know what? And if we don't say before we get out here, I'm gonna feel bad. Nightmare. <laughs> Night of the Living Dead 1990 is the shit with Tony Todd. That's oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Tony, yeah, Tony Todd and Night of the Living Dead is the shit, and that is a goddamn damn good remake. It's not fucking perfect, and definitely ain't as good as the fucking original, but it's a damn good one. Tony Todd's performance makes it worth watching. So, fucking, and, and, and to be honest, dude, Tony Todd just in anything. Watch him in the hat. I love him in Hatchet. He's yeah. so fucking great in there. Uh, Tony Todd, you're the fucking man. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever watch this video, but we love you as for the uh, horror icon you are. And keep fucking keep adding shit to your IMDb. I think you're up to like 200 something acting credits now. So keep going because uh, we'll keep watching it. If, they, if, they, if there's a Tony Todd movie out there, I fucking and I see that he's a part of the cast. I usually automatically watch it anyway. So. <laughs> He was the voice of the fallen in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> was he really? I haven't watched it yet, but it was on his credit. Dude, he's done a voiceover for uh uh I think it's Dark Side in some DC animated film that's like oh uh, supposedly like a violent one because it's like rated R or something. Uh, I gotta watch that shit. Uh but and like I said, Tony Todd and anything, you know, you, you oh, I'm shit. all over it. What? He was a gargoyle on What's New Scooby Doo? Jesus, I gotta watch that. <laughs> oh, murder set pieces. You haven't seen that, huh? No, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, we'll we'll have to do that next month. Yeah, no, I Is yeah, that I've a heard slasher. Of... Hold on. That may have been slasher. I gotta think about that if it's technically a slasher. Oh, well, well, well good time to bring it up. <laughs> Stay tuned soon for Slash Tober. Uh, October's coming up, so our slasher special will be coming back for part two. So the sequel. Uh, yeah, the sequel. <laughs> uh, and if you're if you're watching this video, you probably enjoy slasher. So go check out our last slash tober uh, where we reviewed. What was it like 15 different slashers? <laughs> yeah, so we reviewed the shit ton of slashers, put them head to head with each other every week. And at the end, we had a list of top three slashers, which are definitely shit that you need to check out. So go watch that. Um patreon.com slash flesh wound features uh starts at just a buck like i said at the top of the hour we have an uncensored candy man review on there so go watch that for all the offensiveness and uh follow us on all the social media stuff we're on twitter facebook uh discord all the links are in the description and without further ado say good night todd good night stay sick motherfuckers <laughs>